Hello, kids. So I'm gone, obviously. So you were watching this video lesson. Um, I switched. 1.5 and 1.6 around because I think 1.6 is easier to understand without me physically being in front of you instructing. So we'll just do this one instead and then we'll pick back up with 1.5 tomorrow when I'm at school. Okay, so today the name of the game is polygons, essentially two dimensional figures. So things that you can draw on a piece of paper because it's flat. Okay, um, things that we will talk about is how you define a polygon. Um, and then we'll classify polygons based on a few different things, and then we'll be able to find the perimeter of an area of certain kinds of polygons. So really just a lot, a lot of things about polygons is what we're doing today. So um, it's a little vocab heavy at first, but we can get to some of the examples later on. But the first word is polygon. We need to figure out what this thing is. Um, now polygon is just a closed figure formed by segments. So what you need to think of is it just needs to have straight sides. Like there can't be curves. And another key word would be close. So a closed figure. So all your sides meet and touch. Um, maybe you want to label this. That is a side. And then obviously here would be another side. And then where those two sides meet, we call a vertex. All right. So. That is just our polygon. Polygons can be any shape, any amount of sides. It doesn't really matter as long as it's formed by, again, straight sides. Um, here's a nice picture telling us or showing us the difference between a polygon and not polygons. Again, I just want to emphasize that see how different all these are? It doesn't matter. As long as they're made by straight sides that close, that makes a polygon. However, there are some key things that make it not a polygon. This first one here, you guys see how it's open? So it can't be open. Uh, um, obviously, it's not closed if it's open, so that would be the first one. You can't have sides that crisscross or intersect um, because it needs to be, you know, have open space inside like that. And then we have a theme with a few of these. This guy, this guy right here. Well, they're all curved, they're not straight sides, so that would make it not a polygon. And then this last one, we just have like a segment hanging out all by its lonesome. Again, that would make it not a polygon. Um, I am the worst, and I am the queen of typos, and I misplaced these. Will you guys fix this for me? This should say convex, and this one should say concave. I apologize. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that till just a few minutes ago, and I'd already ran your copies off. Otherwise, I would have changed it. Um, but you can classify a polygon by either concave or convex. Let's first talk about convex. And convex is a polygon that has no vertices that fall in the interior of it. So what does that mean? Well, I think it's easier if you see what concave is, and then you'll kind of have a better idea. Concave would have vertices that fall in the interior. Think of it coming in on itself. It caves in. So for instance, you guys see how it comes in, it comes in, 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 all of these. It comes in in all those places. Whereas if I look at my convex polygons, like they all kind of pop out, right? None of them come inward like this. They're all popping out. So convex and concave. Another way you can classify or name a polygon is based on if it has congruent sides. So if all the sides are congruent, we would call it equal lateral. And a way to remember that, lateral means side. This looks like equal, so all the sides are equal. And remember in a picture, these little tick marks would indicate that all three of those sides are congruent, and so on for these other examples. They all have the same amount of tick marks. That would give us enough information to say it's equal lateral. Similarly, equiangular, again, looks like equal angles. So all of your angles would need to be congruent. So we know all the angles in a rectangle are 90, so it's equiangular. Um, if you have an equilateral triangle, we know those are all 60 degrees. And then we get some goofy picture of a 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Octagon telling us all of these angles here are also equal. Again, equal angulars, equal angles. And then sometimes we get the rare shapes or polygons that are called regular. And a regular polygon is both equilateral and equal angular. So that means all the sides are the same and all of your angles are the same. And your book will try to trick you. So you really kind of have to pay attention to make sure you look at all of your sides. So if we notice here, I have tick marks and if it helps you to circle them all so you know. Therefore, yep, my sides check out. It's equilateral. And then I'm going to go around and check my angles. They all have the same marking telling me, yes, it's equiangular. So it would be regular. Same thing in this guy over here. All my angles check out. Check. All my sides are equal. Then it is regular. Okay. So equilateral, equal sides, equal angular, equal angles. If it's both of them, it's regular. Then the last way we can classify or name a polygon is by the number of sides it has. A lot of these you've probably heard before. Obviously, we know a triangle has three sides. Uh, a four-sided figure is a quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon. Um, maybe some ones you haven't heard. Nine-sided figure, nonagon. Ten-sided decagon. Think how many years in a decade. Well, there's ten years, so a decagon. Um, and then once you get past 12 sides, we don't really have a special name like we do for these folks here. So what you would do is, let's say I had a 15-sided figure. My 15 sides dash gone. A 45-sided figure. 45 gone. And that's what you could do. Because we don't have a special name for those shapes that we don't ever see in real life. Okay. Sorry that that is turned on your notes, but I ran out of space, so that's how it had to be. Um, let's try an example now. Let's see what we can do. It says, name the polygon by its number of sides. Okay, then classify it as either convex or concave and regular or irregular. So let's start with the easy one by just the number of sides. So if I go around and count, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six sides would tell me it's a hexagon. Our next part, we need to decide if it's convex or concave. So I'm looking, do I have any indentation? Is it coming in on itself at all? And I hope you're thinking yes, because right there it's coming inward. It's caving in, so it's concave. And then our last part here, is it regular or irregular? So again, for it to be regular, let's check our sides. Are all of my sides the same? One tick, one tick, one tick, one, one, and one. So our sides check out. Now we got to check our angles. Let's clean this up a bit. So I have one arc mark, one arc mark, but then I get two. So that automatically tells me it's not regular because it doesn't have equal angulars, or sorry, equal angles, so it would be irregular. All right, hope we're doing okay. Okay. Let's try this one again by the number of sides. Count how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know an eight sided figure is called an octagon. Okay, convex or concave. None of my vertices are going inward, they're all kind of popping out. So it's convex. And then my last part is it. Regular or irregular? Again, let's go around and check our sides. One, 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 one. Perfect. And then my angles. One arc, one arc, one arc, one arc, one, 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 one. So all my angles are the same, so therefore it is regular. Regular. Moving right along to our next phase here. So this is a nice little chart. Um, at some point in your homework, you're going to have to find the perimeter and area of a polygon. Um, if, uh, just a little recap here. Okay, perimeter, remember if you were to like walk the distance from here, go all the way around, how far would you go? So you would add up all your sides. 
Yep, so if I start here all the way around, add up all your sides. So that's the perimeter. Circumference is essentially the perimeter of a circle, but since it's circular, we give it a different name. It's the circumference of how far all the way around your circle. And then lastly, area is how much space or surface um, your figure covers. Um, the only thing I really want to note here is when you are finding the area of a triangle, it's half base times height. Well, look, I have three different sides. How do I know which one's my base? Well, your key, key thing you need to look for is they are perpendicular. So you got to look for that right angle, and that will tell you what base to use because your height will come from the vertex of an opposite side. Okay? So your key thing is you got to look for that right angle, and that will tell you your base. So with that being said, let's try find one of these. It says, find the perimeter and area of the figure. Well, we obviously have a triangle. So let's start with the easy one. I'm going to put P for perimeter. And again, we're just going to mark all of our sides. So that one's 9.5 plus 10.2 plus another 9.5. Crunching those numbers together, I get a total perimeter of 29. 0.2 inches. And we can label because we are told they are in inches. Okay, now area, remember we just looked on here and it said half base times height. So I'm going to write that down area equals half base times height. And again, remember I'm looking, this one's kind of obvious because it's in different colors, the height is, but that won't always be the case. But look for that right angle. Now, what two segments form that? Well, this 10.2 one does, and this 8. So I know half my base of 10.2 times my height of 8. Crunching those numbers out, and we get a total of 40.8 inches. Remember, area is squared. So our units are squared. And then at some point you're gonna have to you're gonna be given information and then work backwards to find something else. So in this instance it says the area of a circle is 32 pi square inches, or excuse me, square units. Find the circumference of the circle. So right now I'm working with area of a circle and circumference of a circle. So whenever you start one of these problems, just label your formula. So I know the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. And I know circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So if I look at these two formulas, I realize, or we should notice, that's in terms of a radius, and so is this one. So I can work backwards to find the radius and plug into the other one, right? So let's see what we are given here. So we are given that the area is 32 pi square units. So I'm going to plug that in for A, because I know that's what it equals. And then equals my formula. Okay, remember folks, pi is just a number, right? So I can divide by pi to get R alone. So my pi's go away, which kind of helps out. So now I'm just left with 32 equals R squared. And we all know to get rid of a square, we take the square root. And square root of 32 is equal to 5 point, point, let me look, 7, if you round. Okay, so we found our radius, and now it's going to help us find our circumference, because now I can plug my radius into that R right there. So from here, I'm going to have circumference equal to 2 pi times 5.7. Crunching those numbers out together, I'm going to get 35.8. And circumference is just um, units, it's not square units, so just 35.8 units is our answer for that. And then we have one more example to do together, and that is on, so we do a lot of, or not a lot, but through the year we'll periodically get 
coordinate geometry, which is when you do things on a coordinate plane like this guy here. Um, so it says, find the perimeter and area of a triangle PQR with vertices P and so on and so on. So step one, let's plot these points and see what we're dealing with. So P is at negative 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. I'd probably label them because that will help us. That's P. Q, negative 3, negative 1, and 4, or excuse me, R is at 4, negative 1. And I'm going to connect my triangle. So for perimeter, remember that's like if I were to walk all the way around my triangle, right? So how are we going to find that? Because if we notice, I don't have all straight up and down sides. So what do we have to use? Hope you're thinking distance formula or Pythagorean theorem, right? Because we know how to do those things. So let's start with finding the distance of PQ. For this one, I will do the distance formula just to demonstrate. I'm going to make Q my x2, y2, x1, y1. All right, so here we go. Negative 3 minus negative 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 3 squared. Simplifying, negative 2 squared plus negative 4 squared, parentheses. 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, the square root of 20 is approximately, I just want to make sure I did this right, yep, 4.5-ish, around 4.5. Okay, so I just found PQ to be 4.5, so I'm just going to put that right on here so I know. Okay, that wasn't, that wasn't so bad. Okay, now let's try find PR. And for those of you, my people who like the Pythagorean theorem, I'll do it that way for this one. So how many up do I need to go? One, two, three. So I'm going to have three squared. Is that three? One, two, three. I like four. Can't count today. Four squared. How many over do I need to run? One, two, three, four, five. Plus five squared equals c squared. 16 plus 25 equals c squared. Add those together and I get the square root of 41, which is approximately 6.4. Okay. So well, this looks less confusing. I'm going to erase that. 6.4. And guys, look. You're probably thinking I have to do the distance formula every single time. Well, if you have straight up and down segments on lines like this and this, just count. Save yourself some time here. So if I have QR, I can just count the distance. How many do I need to go? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's 7. Okay, so now we have all the information we need, and we can find out the perimeter and area. So let's start with our, go like this, perimeter, 4.5 plus 6.4 plus 7 for a grand total of 17.9 units. And then for area, how do you find the area of a triangle? I hope you're thinking half base times height. So now I gotta look. Because actually, you could pick any side to be your base, but I'm gonna be smart about this, and I know this is seven, right? And if I go straight up from my, this vertice here, this would be a right angle. Because they would be opposite reciprocal slopes, right? Talked about that. So. I can count how tall this triangle is, one, two, three, four. So it has a height of four, it's a base of seven. So if I plug in here, half, my base is seven times four. Half four is two, 
2 times 7 is 14 units squared. I think there's just one of these on your assignment. And there's graph paper under the on the bookshelf above the crayons. Um, so if you need graph paper, make sure you grab that. Um, if you need help, please help each other out. Don't be afraid to help, ask for help. I will hopefully be able to answer any questions that come up tomorrow in class when I see you. Uh, be good for the sub and have a great rest of your day.